My name is Pablo. Buenos días. ¿Qué tal? And today I'm going to speak about uh, StreamEath, um, a project I've been working on with the Ethereum Foundation and the guys from uh, LivePeer. Um, it's a project that we're using right now to stream DEFCON. So if you go to live.defcon.org, you can actually follow uh, all the sessions there. Um, so yeah, I'll be speaking about what StreamEath is, how it works, um, why we need StreamEath, actually, which I think is the most important thing. And then I'll go over a bit of history on how the application came to, to be, um, where we used it, and also how the future is going to look like for, for StreamEath. So what is StreamEath? This is a very official definition that I made up yesterday. So. Um, StreamEath is a self-hosted application that event organizers can use to host their virtual events. Like I said, StreamEath was born out of a collaboration between Ethereum Foundation, LifePeer, and myself. Um, it all started with Ethereum Foundation wanting to decouple the channel from YouTube. Um, they wanted to do three simple things at first. So our current version of StreamEath does these three simple things fairly good, I think. Uh, so stream, we wanted to live stream the events, of course, without relying on YouTube. Uh, we wanted to also show a schedule of the sessions uh, for each talk. And after the event was done, we wanted to record, um, show the recording of all the sessions that we stream, right? So when we started designing the, the application, we decided that we wanted to mimic um, kind of how the application looked like. We wanted to mim mimic it to what a real event is. So we designed everything around rooms and sessions, right? So one event has multiple rooms, and one room has multiple sessions. Um, so then from then on, we started building StreamEath. The first thing we focused on was, was on live streaming. So each room can have one live stream. Um, through, through the whole application, you can concurrently stream on multiple rooms. So today at, in, in, in DEF CON, we're concurrently live streaming nine multiple rooms, uh, which I think is pretty cool. We also focused on uptime. Um, we built in a failover mechanism into our playback systems that allows a single room to ingest uh, two sources that have the same content to fail over to one or the other in case there were errors in the uh, broadcasting on one of the sources. Um, you might be wondering what we use instead of YouTube. And that is, of course, very interesting. Uh, and that's where life here, life here comes, comes in. Um, StreamEath is actually provider agnostic, which means that we don't do any of the broadcasting ourselves. right? We, just, we are just a front end that hooks into whatever video provider we want. In our case, we build the solution by default on top of LivePeer, which is an awesome protocol that some of you may know. I, I know these guys know them because they're the core developers, so yeah. Um, LivePeer is a decentralized video streaming network built on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, LivePeer can currently distribute live and on-demand content. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll go more in depth on why we chose life here later. But you can imagine it's a protocol built on Ethereum, so decentralization, censorship resistant, uh, and all the nice things about decentralization, right? Um, so like I said, the application is provider agnostic, but there's already a out-of-the-box solution that integrates with life here. So you can uh, start up StreamEath, uh, set up your life here account, and start uh, streaming decentralized. Then we also put a lot of focus into the schedule. This is because uh, StreamEath is not only something you can use to live stream, but it's actually something that we want to, that event organizers want to use to, like I said, replicate the, uh, the event experience, experience, but virtually, right? 
So the schedule, as always, is a very important part of any event, uh, especially events like DEF CON, where you have a lot of sessions uh, in a lot of rooms. You kind of want to automate the process of scheduling everything and showing the information in a nice, in a nice uh, accessible way. Uh, so we built a schedule. By the way, I'm, I'm talking about the features, then I will do a live demo and showcase the application, because I know it might be a bit difficult to imagine what I'm saying, right? Um, so yeah, the schedule is a very central part of, of uh, StreamEath. We built multiple integrations uh, with different schedule providers. Uh, DEF CON is using Pretox as a schedule manager, which is, and uh, Pretox is an open source tool for, for management that the DEF CON team is using to organize all the sessions and, and all the rooms. Uh, so we built an integration with their API, and that's also available in StreamEath, so if you're an event organizer, you can spin up um, a Pretox instance and you know get going with that and have a pretty nice schedule functionality there. Um, also, the application has an internal clock, which will basically uh, sync you up with the latest sessions and always display kind of the current information on which stock is happening and all of that, but I think that's better to, that you guys see it in a live demo that I'm gonna sh uh, show later. Then of course, like we said, on-demand video playback that is also crucial for the, for the event organizers. Uh, actually, most of the views for events happen during on-demand playback, so uh, live video don't usually get too many views, but then when you, when you store that video and you show it uh, on-demand, uh, because of the content we're sharing here in these talks, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, people go uh, and watch it. Uh, so yeah, this is also cur currently all the on-demand video that we are hosting on different StreamEath instances. It's also living on the Live Here network. Uh, they recently developed their uh, video on-demand features, so it's working very nicely. Um, and I'll also show an example of a StreamEath instance where we used video on demand. Uh, it was at ETH Berlin last month. It worked very, very nicely. So I'll show um, a demo of that as well. And finally, plugins. And I think this is the most interesting feature. Um, so the software ar architecture that we built was thought to contain this plugin feature, right? So essentially, we, in the long term, of course, we want different protocols to build plugins into StreamEath so that they can integrate their features uh, into the application, right? So for instance, we are working with Radical to integrate Radical Drips, and that will allow to, uh, I don't know if you guys know Radical Drips, but it's basically a, a product that allows to uh, have tipping on web uh, interfaces. So you could have a StreamEath, a StreamEath instance where you're live streaming an event, and then you have the Radical Drips plugin, and so users of that, uh, viewers of that uh, event could donate directly to the speakers, which I think is pretty cool, right? So the plugin um, architecture is there. Now we need to develop the ecosystem and you know bring people in to develop these plugins for us. Oh, and this is the slide where I show the live demo. So I'm gonna, uh, yeah. Yes, so this is the StreamEath instance that we use for uh, DEF CON. And we can see there that the video is buffering because the Wi-Fi isn't the best in the world. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, we are live streaming through live here. This is the main stage, as you guys can see. Uh, so even though network conditions are pretty shit, uh, it's working fine, right? So props to the live here team. Um, in this case, we also added uh, the YouTube link. So the good thing about, about StreamEath is that because it's an open source uh, application, each instance can be adjusted to the needs of the event, right? So for this, in this case, for DEF CON, uh, we also wanted to include a YouTube stream for, uh, you know, to, to have the maximum reach. Uh, so we have, we're streaming both on live here and YouTube, and we added, we added, added this nice uh, switcher in the bottom, so you can switch between. Like I said, then the schedule uh, for this 
instance, we build the schedule into a nice navigation bar on the right panel of the page. Uh, you can kind of look through all the talks. Uh, so yeah, when I refresh, you guys can see that the schedule kind of synced to the latest hour. Um, so this should be me. Oh no, um, this is talk five. This is not my stage. So yeah, uh, right now in stage five, uh, how to scale the blockchain is happening. Uh, so that's, that's the internal clock feature that I was talking about. Um, and yeah, it's pretty simple, but it works. Uh, like we said, I'm gonna show also, and this is the ETH Berlin stream ETH that we deployed. Um, this is a custom schedule, schedule page that we built. Uh, so this is containing all of the ses sessions for ETH Berlin. You can filter by state, stages and days. And so when you click on a session, it goes to the session page and it loads up the VOD content and also some speaker information and kind of like the description of the event. And let's see if the VOD video, but go check it out. Watch the etherlin. Um, it's very good uh, content. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, three basic features, but very powerful uh, and you know very effective as well. Because the main goal was to decouple uh, ETH events and community events of centralized platforms like YouTube, right? So I think even though it's nothing fancy, we're not Twitch, we don't do VR, we don't do 3D, nothing, it really serves a purpose, right? Uh, and now, because I'm talking about purpose, I want to go into a bit of the ethics on why we built, we built this, why we think it's important, and why uh, yeah, no, why we built this and why we think it's important. I think that's it, yeah. Uh, most of the Web3 events are being broadcasted using centralized providers. And this sucks a lot. And it's not just because I say that, it actually sucks. Um, like we all know, YouTube and Twitch don't really align with the core values of decentralization that we, you know, uh, that we're all here for and that we believe in. Uh, so StreamEath is, you know, should be a good first step to help these communities decouple from, from uh, these services, right? Uh, so now we're gonna look a bit of what are the problem, problems about, uh, that you get with using uh, YouTube, right? So the first one is pretty clear. Uh, YouTube and Twitch and others are censorship prone. Um, so yeah, here I'm, I, I put two tweets. Uh, the first one, was at ETH Barcelona. Uh, the live stream was taken down because they had some copyright issues, which is usually, I mean, if event production is pretty hard. Uh, you have all kinds of audio, you have all kinds of music, and sometimes uh, uh, some music se segments with copyright can slip into the production, uh, and then your whole stream gets taken down. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, so ETH Barcelona had one day without uh, streaming, and then, uh, there's another tweet about uh, a YouTube account that went, got taken down because they were uh, talking about web free content on YouTube. So uh, yeah, there were some disputes and YouTube kind of banned their, their account, right? So what is the solution? StreamEath. Uh, so that's why I'm here talking about StreamEath. No, uh, the solution is, you know, having a front end. So uh, the first one is the front end, right? You wanna deploy the front end on a decentralized storage layer like IPFS or Swarm. And that is actually one of the next steps we're gonna take after DEF CON, is to make sure the application is lightweight and we can use it and, and deploy it in, in one of these two layers. And the second solution to the problem is using decentralized um, video providers like LivePeer. Uh, since LivePeer is a decentralized layer of nodes, uh, the content cannot be really stopped even if the government or the platform, any platform says so, right? The next problem that arises from uh, using um, centralized providers is the intellectual property. This is kind of tied to the censorship prone issue. Um, so like we said, copyright claims can result in streams being taken down, channels being banned, and users being demonetized. Uh, we don't want that. Um, and also, it's not only that they're taking down the streams but uh, it's the lack of transparency in the process to decide which streams get taken down and which content is being shown or not, right? 
So there's really an ethical discussion around what content are we being allowed to see, right? So using decentralized services, we don't really solve this content because there's no moderation, right? But I think we're heading in the right direction uh, in regards to not allowing this one central entity to decide what we can see or what we can't see, right? Next will be the high fee to content creators. And this is also fairly interesting, especially recently uh, Twitch, I think increased their, uh, their share they're taking from, from content creators from I think it was 15 to 30% or something like this. Because these centralized providers are actually super expensive to run, right? So Twitch is, even though the, free is co the content is free, uh, it's mega expensive to run an operation like Twitch. Uh, so in the long term, they, are, they have two solutions. And one solution is to increase the share they're taking from content, creator, content creators. The other solution is uh, to display ads, right? So yeah, moving on to a decentralized solution like StreamEath and also LivePeer will basically allow us to give back the monetization is, uh, power to the content creator. Uh, because then if a content creator is using LivePeer to distribute the content, the content is actually theirs, right? So he is then uh, able to decide how he monetizes the, the content. Also, building on top of the plugin system that, we, that, that I was talking about uh, earlier, uh, we're really setting up, setting up this ecosystem for developers to come in and build custom solutions on top of StreamEath that they can use to, to you know, uh, monetize their content. So Radical Drips would be a good example, but you know, this is Web3. The best thing we do is create monetization uh, routes that this is Web3 crypto, we're good at monetizing without having someone in the middle taking a share of uh, our uh, money. So you guys can figure out the rest. Uh, just build a custom plugin that sends money to one address or the other, and we should be solving this issue. And finally, and that's for me, this is the most important one, uh, the Web3 ecosystem and how t Twitch, YouTube, and others are not really respecting um, the values that we stand for, right? Especially the open source uh, and the communities, they build solutions sometimes and they're trying to get into, into Web3, but they're not actually thinking about the community. They're not making this code public. They're not contributing back to the protocols they use, right? Uh, they're not part of our community. And yeah, I think uh, we stream it is actually existing because we believe in these ideals and it's coming out of a community effort between the EF, Lifepeer, and me and others, the other developers, uh, to embrace these ideals, right? And, and try and help, like I said, communities decouple from these providers. And finally, oh, no, no, the most important slide. Uh, the members of the team, and I want a round of applause after I say, all of the names. So um, first we have Hans, which is uh, the guy that developed quite a big chunk of the code. He's sitting there in the audience. Big props, applause. <laughs> yes. Then we have Wesley Eiffer, he's sitting there. Oh, shit. I don't know if Akio is here. I don't think so. He's watching me on the stream, Akio. What's up? Uh, he's the designer. And then I'm there with the panda that I set for the merch. Uh, it's a, my PFP for the merch day. I didn't change it, so yeah, the panda. And that's me. And you don't have to clap. No. Uh, so yeah, it was awesome working with these guys. Uh, really great. Quick things. We used it at Def Connect. That was the first demo that we used. It was awesome. Lots of traction. Uh, we hacked a demo in like a week. Uh, so that's why I'm saying it's a great team, because we didn't really plan the development, it was just, it was really a decentralized development effort because everyone was doing its own thing, right? So, but we got to Def Connect, it was awesome, we got great numbers of viewership, and no bugs, I think, uh, so great. Then we went to ETH Berlin, and you know, we redid the design, uh, we called it Stream, uh, Stream ETH 2.0, we added dark mode, which uh, is actually the best feature in the whole application. Uh, the schedule, 
Um, super good. There really we had no bugs, and I, I know this for sure. Um, and overall, we were super happy with it. And then, yeah, DEF CON, which is uh, great. So yeah, and how does the future look like? We're going to focus on usability, we're going to focus on plugins, and we're going to focus on embracing the Web3 ecosystem, like we said. And yeah, and this is kind of like our vision. I don't know if you guys know WordPress, but uh, the vision that we had since the beginning is to have StreamEP WordPress, so something, so WordPress for video. Right, so something that uh, event organizers can clone and use quickly to to stream their events. Hello, hi, Paulo. Thank you for your talk. Um, I am an event organizer. Uh, I have used several streaming providers, and I like live peer. But one thing that worries me is how is the performance uh, compared to other alternatives like Vimeo, YouTube because yeah. this is decentralized, so this is kind of worry for, for events. Yes. So this, a uh, live peer is pretty good. So uh, I was a pretty early community member, and I've been using it, and in the early days, it had some issues. So since the beginning, I, I come from the Web2 world, like production world, and you always have failovers. And when I started using live peer, I was like, hey, we need to build a failover here. So that's why we have built in a failover mechanism into all of our players, right? So. On the one hand, life here got really good already. On the other hand, we have a failover mechanism that allows uh, to basically set two life here channels for the same room, so you have double the reliability. So uh, yeah. But what, what about the streaming related to attendees? Because you have attendees all around the world, and streaming providers have like a CDN content yeah, yeah, yeah. network. No. So how Live Peers solves that? Yeah, Live Peer. I mean, there's a bit of a more complex question because you have the Live Peer the protocol and then you have Live Peer Studio. Uh, but basically, Live Peer Studio and that's what we are using has its own CDN, and latency is pretty good. So you shouldn't be have an issue if you have people from around the world trying to watch your stream. Like I said, performance is really good. East Berlin, we had a bunch of people watching. Defcon, a bunch of people watching here. You know, it's DEF CON. Uh, yesterday we had 3K views on Life Here Alone uh, and almost no downtime. So, yeah. If you want, we can speak later and I can explain a bit more. Yeah. Thank you.